Good evening, everyone. It is my pleasure to call the Wednesday, March the 27th, 2024, Hampton City School Board meeting to order. Ms. Charbonneau, will you please call the roll? Ms. Alfonja? Here. Dr. Banks Gray? Here. Ms. Cherry? Here. Mr. Kilgore? Here. Mr. Samuels? Present. Dr. Woodhouse? Here. Dr. Mason? Here, let the re record reflect that all board members are present and accounted for. And we will now have our opening, which is going to be led for us by Leah Hutchinson, who's a fifth grade student at Phillips Elementary School. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Did you bring something to share with us today? Yes. Okay, go right ahead. I brought a poem that I picked out. It is called A Happy Place. A true happy place is a place deep inside that bubbles and glistles and glows. It grows from the seed that we plant in the world when love and our gratitude flows. Will we'll nourish and will nourish our minds and nurture our souls, and radiate light like a star. This poem was written by Helen Pam. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, and I see you're a fifth grade student. What, what's your favorite subject? Science. Science, okay. And what do you like about science? Um, I like to learn about the planets. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good, good. And what do you do in your, your off time when you're not in school? Um, after school, I go into the after school program and I like to color and play with my friends. Oh, good, good. All right, well, thank you very much. And who do you have with you today? <clears throat> my mom and my sister. All right. Haley and mom. All right, all right, that's good. And who from your school do you have with you? Dr. C and Miss Dandridge. All right. all right, sounds good. We can get you all to stand and be recognized and thank you for sharing Leah with us tonight. Thank you so much. We'll have to stop by and say hello when we're over there at Smith Elementary School, all right? Thank you, and thank you all for sharing her with us tonight. Oh, I said Smith, Phillips, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phillips Elementary School. I don't know why maybe say Smith. Hmm. But thank you so much, all right? So moving along, uh, next item is the adoption of tonight's agenda. What's the pleasure of the board? Um, before we do that, Mr. Chairman, if I could. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, just, no, just to Leah. Mm -hmm. Leah, you mentioned that your favorite um, subject is science. Yes. And you talked about the planets. Mm -hmm. Are you prepared for the solar eclipse that's coming up? Um, I'm excited for it. Well, that's wonderful. So what we want to make sure you do is that, A, I know you've been told, don't stare at it, right? And you're going to get your little solar eclipse glasses. Um, yes, <laughs> yes, so we want to keep you safe, so you'll be back here on April 9th, okay? Okay. Okay, enjoy. Bye-bye. Right. <laughs> yeah, sure All right, any other back. comments from board members? All right, so back to the agenda. All right. Mr. Chair, move approval of the agenda as presented. Second. Second. All right, it's been uh, properly moved by Mr. Kilgore and seconded by Dr. Woodhouse that we approve tonight's agenda as presented. Any discussion? Ms. Charbonneau, will you please call for the vote? Ms. Alvanja? Aye. Dr. Banks-Gray? Aye. Ms. 
Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Mr. Mason? Or Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. And so next up is 2.01. The consent agenda is the personnel report 24-07. And what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Okay. Second. All right. It's been moved by Dr. Woodhouse and seconded by uh, Ms. Safanja that we approve tonight's consent agenda as presented. Any discussion? Ms. Charbonneau, we please call for the vote. Ms. Safanja? Aye. Dr. Banks Gray? Aye. Dr. Ba Dr. Ch Ms. Cherry? Okay. Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye. Motion carries. And at this time, I will turn it over to our superintendent, Dr. Raymond Haynes, for the superintendent and staff reports. Thank you, Chair Mason, Vice, ba Vice Chair Banks Gray, members of the board, division leadership team in the Hampton community. Uh, last Thursday, those students who advanced to the citywide project-based learning division showcase did an outstanding job presenting their projects before a panel of judges and a number of audience members. This evening, the team that placed first with us is here to share their project with the board. Introducing this presentation is Mr. Mika Pollard, our Chief of Secondary School Leadership. Thank you. Dr. Mason, Dr. Banks Gray, school board members, Dr. Haynes, good evening. As you may be aware, the Academies of Hampton and the Curriculum Instruction and Assessment Department have developed a powerful partnership to ensure authentic learning experiences for our students. One of those experiences is, pro is project-based learning in our high schools. Project-based learning connects content and skills between classrooms and across disciplines in collaboration with a community partner to address a problem. Hampton City Schools hosted our division project-based learning showcase on Thursday, March 21st at The Hampton High School. 12 teams representing Bethel, Hampton, Kickatan, and Phoebus presented their projects for the opportunity to win monetary awards. Each member of the first place team won $500. How, you might ask? Well, the prize, prizes are being provided by other school divisions. For the last several years, Hampton City Schools has been selling its curriculum on a subscription basis and now partners with over 20 divisions in and outside of Virginia. On behalf of our students, I'd like to say thank you to those divisions. Tonight, I am honored to introduce an outstanding group of young people from Phoebus High School. The students representing the VPCC ACE Academy were our first place winners and will be presenting their project that focuses on literacy. Phantoms. Good evening, everyone. My name is Isaiah Johnson. I'm a senior, and my favorite book growing up was Diary of Hello, my name is Jaden Witherspoon. My name is My name is Robert Beach. I'm a junior, and my favorite book was Cat in the Hat. My name is Simone Harris. I'm a freshman, and my favorite book was Chrysanthemum. My name is Kanan Claypool. I am also a freshman, and my favorite book series was Dork Diaries. And we are a part of the Ace Academy. And this is our presentation on Phantom's Read. Phantom's Read is going to read to elementary school students to help them achieve and develop skills of reading. 
The NM's read is important to us because we feel as if students aren't reading enough and it's being reflected in their SOL reading scores. Envision themselves in future opportunities that they'll like to be in and promote it for them not to be just in school but out of school as well. 40% of America's elementary schoolers fall below standard reading level. We recognize how this translates into adulthood with around 21% of adults being functionally illiterate. We also saw how this trickles into our communities. More than half of all third through eighth grade students in Virginia have either failed or at risk of failing their reading SOL. These students who are at risk and who are failing are not growing. All, all third through eighth grade students take a reading SOL, and when we saw how their reading scores were going, we decided to pick three elementary schools in our area to read to. We chose, Boren, we chose Barron, Forest, and Smith Elementary Schools. Smith and Forest being on the elementary HCS, or the HCS elementary school watch list. This means that their reading scores fall really close to them not meeting the standard and gaining school accreditation. The scholastic reading measure is a test that all elementary students take to show their independent reading level. When our students took it in September, Forrest and Smith had over 50% of their students reading two to three grade levels below target reading level. However, by January, we saw this number significantly decrease by nine to 10%. Teachers love the impact that mentors have on their young learners. We saw an 82% increase in academic performance and a 95% satisfaction rate among teachers. On the brochure that we handed you guys had a sample of the questions that we asked our students and teachers. And when we asked our second and third grade students before we went to their schools, did if you are a good reader, 65% of them said yes. And our post survey results saw that 78% of them said yes. This is an increase of 10%. And when looking at the teacher feedback, we saw a lot of similarities, saying that we did a relatively good job. We should just get books that simulate the students' interests and relate to them more. Our first step was research, where we discussed our driving question in history class. Our step two was planning. We chose the schools we were going to read to, making sure we are encouraging them to read outside of, outside of when we read to them. And our step three is implementation. Of course, we visited the three schools every, well, once a month, every month since November. And in between each visit, we do send classroom letters, which there is a sample in the brochure as well. And that's perfect. All right, in total, we read to a total of 550 students with 60 volunteers. We donated one book to each classroom we read to along with the school library each time we visited, which totals out to around 123 books. And we provided a mentorship program and hosted a book drive where we, if you brought a book into the basketball game, you'd get a dollar off your ticket. And step four is reflection. This is where we look back on student and teacher feedback and see what worked well and what we could do better for the next visit. What worked well so far is maintaining a consistent schedule and creating a mentorship bond between us and our students. Us going consistently did help us really engage with the students and really see how they grown into their love of literacy. For areas for growth, we definitely want to show more individual attention. We want to break off in smaller groups, having the students interact more. We want to reach more schools in the city of Hampton, and we want to increase our book variety because we only have five so far. As a group, our reflections, me personally, I definitely learned the skill of patience and how to connect with your youth. Me, I wasn't too big of a kid person in the beginning of time, but over time, I definitely found myself to find things a little bit more. What we would do differently. We all agreed that we could be more prepared with how we um, are organized and our overall enthusiasm when we go to visit the kids. We also said that we could have a better book selection so we could reach each child and cater to their individual interests. Me personally, it allowed me to connect with family more as, as I have cousins in some of the classes we read to, so now I go over to my grandmother's house and I read to them on the weekend. And what we're most proud of since starting our project is how we positively impacted all of our students by helping them want to read more outside of school. 
For our community impact, we are partner with Hampton Roads Transit for, well, for Transit Equity Day, we walk to the bus stop of Vice Mayor Jimmy Gray, we rode the HRT and participated in Transit Equity Day celebration, in which they also helped us buy their Iron Water Parks book. We're also the Mayor's Book Club readers for the months of April, March, April, and May, where we read to Mogan, Mogan's Early Child Care Center. And we actually partnered with the Virginia Education Foundation and the Hampton School Language Arts Department, where Last week, the day of our presentation, we did donate over 600 books to our children over at Fair Enforcement. Four since our last visit. I definitely think that you guys have made it more cool to read mm -hmm. and um, them seeing football players and uh, we had dancers come in our room one time or someone who was in choir and so they're seeing kids who are interested in the things, well, kids, young adults who are interested in the same things that they are. So you guys definitely have encouraged them to pick up a book more, for sure. Okay. are the phantoms come and read to our students since November once a month and it really has been a very good experience for our students our teachers get up in front of them and say the same things every single day as far as like reading and how important it is in life um, but when they have kids that they see from their communities coming into the school and when they have young adults that they see that they can make connections with the football players the dancers and hear the things like hey I have to make good grades I have to be able to read they really are able to make that connection which inspires them to then pick up a book and become a better reader and we know that the more that they read the better that they're going to become and that's even outside of the classroom and all the things that we're able to teach them so them y'all coming into our classrooms every single month and really reading to our kids and making those connections was very meaningful for them they really enjoyed it they look forward to it when they thought you weren't coming back anymore they were very sad that we weren't going to see you again <laughs> So to continue that partnership and to have that relationship, it has made a huge impact. And you can see that in our scores, too. And I'm Michael Blunt, uh, principal of Smith Elementary School. Um, and so for us, the teachers uh, were definitely uh, very impressed uh, by the students um, who came over. Uh, they were prepared. Uh, they were ready to read, ask questions of the students. Um, and so it wasn't just that they were reading the book, they actually took the kids through, had, made them think about what they were reading and made sure that they were engaged in it. Um, the students, um, they had an opportunity to see what could have been uh, some neighbors or some relatives. Um, they're talking about reading. And so for them, it, it made it cool uh, to read, as we talked about uh, football players, cheerleaders and whatnot. But then also these are members of the ACE Academy. And so these students are, uh, hold up a very high level of um, scholastic achievement. And so they show the importance uh, that reading has in being able to be successful um, in all that you do. Um, and then also we have a couple of uh, Smith Sharks here um, on tonight, two uh, teachers, Ms. Fall and Ms. Britton, and then Jacob Falls uh, here. Um, <laughs> and so um, during that presentation, there was a class, uh, classroom from Smith that uh, we uh, live streamed. And so this is the teacher and one of the students uh, from that class um, doing that day. And for the Education Academy, we plan on creating a Warriors Read so we can reach more than our three schools right now. And also, we want to have um, summer opportunities for the kids as well. So we will partner with University Corner and 21st Century Program where we read the classes one, one day, once a week, over this. Our children. <laughs> <laughs> and this is our children that we don't have their books to. This is them over Zoom. And that is for our presentation. We are open to any questions as of right now. Thank you so much. Let's give them a round of applause. Right, questions or comments from board members? 
Dr. Banks Gray. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Might I say, what an impressive project. I'm just, I don't think I could smile any harder than I am right now. That Y'all should feel so um, excited and encouraged and just so proud of yourself. This is such absolutely amazing. Now, what was the time frame that y'all started? I, I was trying to make sure I, I, I had that in my notes. What was the time frame that y'all started this project, start to end, that y'all went into the classrooms and started reading? November. In November. November, fantastic. November. I'm so impressed. This is so amazing, y'all. And I just want to say thank you so much for showing such passion for, for learning to read and encouraging our, our young folks to get out. And, and the book selection is just absolutely amazing. So job well done, everybody. Job well done. Any other comments? Ms. Chair? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I want to echo Dr. Banks Gray's comments, but I got to tell you something. The whole time you were making your presentation, I was sitting here thinking about the fact that one of the things we tout in the school division is that Hampton City Schools is a family. And when I thought about that, and based on your project and the way you presented it, by you working with the younger students at the schools, you really are taking care of your own. It's like they're your younger brothers and sisters. And I really do appreciate that effort because that shows that unity of commitment. It shows that unity of academics, but it also shows that unity of love. And I really want to thank you all for that. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I want to add something really quick. I'm sorry. Dr. I'm back again. <laughs> Part two. So can y'all explain, I opened up my book. Can y'all explain this front page for me really quickly and the rest of the audience, what y'all actually have here, the signatures and what have you and the different comments, motivational comments. Yeah, really this is what it is, like motivational comments. So when you open up books and see reading is fun, keep reading, read just education, the light, just something so they have more motivation to keep reading. So, and we signed our names and everything. Fantastic. And we did sign our names in every book that we donated and we let the classrooms keep them so they can look over the different quotes and the different signatures from everybody just to make sure that they know that we care for them. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Now, I do have a question. Did this project inspire any of you to decide to become a teacher? No, sir. <laughs> <laughs> honest. You're honest. Very honest. It's an honest group. Honest group. <laughs> We're recruiting. <laughs> We're recruiting. <laughs> Mr. Samuels. So we, uh, we may have to end on a positive note with this. I really appreciate the fact that you all did the research mm -hmm. and, uh, and to identify yeah, the research that y'all did as it relates to you know, where we reside with reading and then you have a pre and post assessment that was done. That is so impressive. These are some of the things that collegiate students are doing. People are doing this in their research as it relates to the scientific about reading. It's a science to read, and you guys are doing the research. So kudos to you, and I'm so excited that you guys are in the ACE Academy. And I'm looking forward to, in three years to see each one of you walk across that stage and receive your associate's degree. But this is the start and the beginning of you being a researcher and a scientist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Okay, now how much money did you get? <laughs> Cash? A check. Oh, okay. I'm just, I'm just checking. I'm just checking. I'm not, I'm so. <laughs> and that's $500 a piece. Well deserved. Thank you so much. Give this one to my yeah. grandchild. Yeah. I'll take yours. Got a grandbaby. Like, no, 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 thank you. I'm just, I'm just saying that we ought to give them to the kids. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to give this to my grandson. I'm going to give it to my grandson. Yeah. You need them back? Yeah, I'm going to keep this. 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 Yeah, I'm going to keep this.
It That's does. reasonable. Some, some so it's a research bill. <laughs> All right. Can we get the phantom admin team to stand up also and be yeah, recognized? Yes. I'm going to get, get that. And then we also have some parents with us as well. Where are our parents? If you would stand to be recognized also. And we did, we had, you know, elementary school principals as a part of the presentation. So thank you all for collaborating with our students because we know that it certainly takes a partnership when it comes to the whole teaching and learning component and thinking, you know, I always say there is no box, but you know, thinking outside of the box and doing some, some really innovative things. And so this was certainly an innovative project. So thank you all. All right, Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Chair, our next presentation this evening will be from Dr. Michael Thornton, our interim chief financial officer. He will provide a brief update on the state budget process to include a proposed recommendation to the board now that we have a revised local contribution amount. Dr. Thornton. Thank you, Dr. Haynes, uh, Chairman Mason, Vice Chair Banks Gray, school board members, good evening. As Dr. Haynes, uh, Mentioned this evening, we're going to provide the board with an update on recommended changes to the superintendent's uh, proposed budget ahead of your scheduled action on the budget this evening. So we'll begin with update to the revenue. Last week, we shared with the board that the city had indicated that they were going to provide an additional $1,938,855 in local contribution, bringing the local contribution for next year to 95573000 uh, for the school division. And certainly this is part of the ongoing um, revenue sharing agreement between the school board and the city council. So the budget that you will take action on this evening includes a total local contribution of $95,573,000. Expenditure update. With that 1.9 million, it provides an additional 1% salary increase on top of the 2% salary increase that was in the superintendent's original proposed budget from March the 6th, uh, bringing the total compensation increase to 3%. And then finally, a reclassification of custodial contract services from that of purchase services as it, it has been the past several years to that of custodial salaries and benefits accounting for additional staff uh, in-house for those services, 191 full-time positions for custodial services. So essentially what we did was reallocate it from contract services to those salary and benefit lines to accommodate those planned 191 full-time custodial positions for this coming fiscal and school year. Next slide, please. Thank you. So that would bring the total operating revenue, proposed operating revenue for next year. Again, of course, we're still waiting to hear back from the state, as are the other 132 or so school divisions. Uh, the governor uh, has not taken any action to sign off on the budget at this point. So what you have, again, in your state funding here for tonight is based on the governor's original introduced uh, budget back in December. So again, the total operating revenue proposed and included in the superintendent's recommended budget is $289,035,224, representing a $1,968,441 increase over this current year's budget of $287,66,783, representing again just under a 1% increase uh, year over year. Again, we do anticipate uh, based on the General Assembly's uh, uh, budget, uh, additional funding, but it's pending uh, final action uh, by the governor. Uh, next slide, please. And finally, on the expenditure budget, again, a balanced budget totaling $289,035,224, again, representing a $1.9 million increase over the current year's operating expenditure budget, again, 0.69% increase. Happy to answer any questions you would have. Questions from board members? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, that concludes reports from the superintendent. All right. Thank you very much. 
All right, moving along to item number four, items for action. We have 4.01, minutes of the school board meeting of March the 20th, 2024. 4.02, the superintendent's proposed budget fiscal year 2024-2025. And 4.03, student fees for fiscal year 2024-2025. And what's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chair, I move approval of action items 4.01 through 4.03. One at a time. All right, one at a time. Mm -hmm. Here we go. So, <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move approval of action item 4.01. Mm -hmm. Second. All right, it's been moved by Dr. Banks Gray and seconded by uh, Ms. Afonja that we approve item 4.01, Minutes of the School Board Meeting of March 20th, 2024. Any discussion? Ms. Charbonneau, will you please call for the vote? Ms. Alfonja? Aye. Dr. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Dr. Mason? Abstain. <laughs> Motion carries. Next item. Mr. Chair, I move approval of action item 4.02. Second. That's been moved by Dr. Banks Gray. And seconded by Mr. Kilgore that we approve item 4.02, superintendent's proposed budget for fiscal year 2024-2025. Any discussion? Ms. Charbonneau, will you please call for the vote? Ms. Alfonja? Aye. Dr. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye, motion carries. And Mr. Chair, I move approval of action item 4.03. Second. All right, it's been moved by Dr. Banks Gray and seconded by Dr. Woodhouse that we approve item 4.03, student fees for fiscal year 2024-2025. Any discussion? Ms. Charbonneau, will you please call for the vote? Ms. Alfonja? Aye. Dr. Banks Gray? Aye. Ms. Cherry? Aye. Mr. Kilgore? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Dr. Woodhouse? Aye. Dr. Mason? Aye, motion carries. All right, are they moving on? Uh, item number five, hearing of any delegations or presentations of any written communications or petitions. I have not none. Mm-hmm, all right. <clears throat> All right, that takes us to item number six, and I'm going to borrow your computer for a second. I'm having some computer difficulty at the moment here, and I just need to, as I move to item number six, our next meeting. All right, the next school board work session will be held at 6.30 on April the 17th, right here at Jones Magnet Middle School, and then the next school board meeting will be held at 6.30 on May the 1st, right here at Jones Magnet Middle School. All right, that brings us to item 6.02, items for information, and I'll start with you, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Last Thursday, March 21st, we had the honor of celebrating 34 exceptional educators at our Teacher of the Year banquet held at the landing. It was truly a wonderful evening where we had the opportunity to celebrate these dedicated individuals who exemplify excellence through their unwavering professionalism and steadfast commitment to the students of Hampton City Schools. Additionally, we announced 12 finalists, seven from our elementary schools, three from our middle schools, and two from our high schools. These finalists will now go on to compete for Hampton City Schools 24, 25 elementary, middle, and high school Teacher of the Year, as well as the division level Teacher of the Year, which is announced at our August back to school staff event. Congratulations to the following finalists. At the elementary school level, Lindsay Cornell at Asbury Elementary School, Lizzie Tig, Tig, Barron Fundamental Elementary School, Kara Hart, Bryan Elementary School, Alyssa Dowling, Cooper Elementary School, Cooper Elementary Magnet School, I'm sorry, Sarah Hammond, Forest Elementary School, Elda Garcia, Phillips Elementary School, and Brooklyn Johnson at Smith Elementary School. Our middle school level finalists, Cheryl McLaughlin, Jones Magnet Middle School, Ms. Shayla Shipley, Lindsay Middle School, and Danielle Struther at Tarrant Middle School. Our high school level finalists, Sharice Bozeman, the Adult and, the Adult and Alternative Learning Center, 
and Francesca Conley Mitchell at the Hampton High School. Congratulations to all of our finalists and teachers of the year. This Friday, March 29th. Mm -hmm. This Friday, March 29th is the end of the third grading period. It is also an early close day for all students and staff. Early close is a two hour early dismissal. Monday, April 1st through Friday, April 5th is the division spring break for students and teachers. Uh, throughout the month of April, we will celebrate the month of the military child and honor the proud and resilient military connected students we serve in Hampton City Schools. In partnership with the City of Hampton, Fort Monroe, and the Virginia Air and Space Center, we will be illuminating prominent landmarks and structures with purple lighting. Purple lighting. <laughs> in addition, all schools will receive a collection of digital resources and printed materials to display and show their appreciation for our students who contribute to the strength of our nation's armed forces. Lastly, on April 17, 2024, our schools will host exciting events, and our own food and nutrition services will serve a menu full of healthy purple foods for Purple Up Day. We ask that all members of the Hampton City Schools community wear purple to show our support of military-connected students and families. April 17th. That concludes mm -hmm. information, sir, from the superintendent. All right, any other information from board members? Well, I would like to give a shout out to Ms. Tamisha Augustine, who is a graduate of Bethel High School, the 1067 family, as I'm told, <laughs> as they say. Uh, she has been named the girls' head basketball coach at Hampton University. And so people are proud and excited to see her come back home to coach in the 757 area. So welcome home, uh, Tamisha. And then also, uh, Mr. Ivan Thomas has been also appointed as the head men's basketball coach who also has, a t has ties to Hampton City Schools. He's a former head basketball coach at Kikatan High School. So we're excited to have some hometown heroes back here in the 757 doing some great things and looking forward to those things, uh, great things from them at the Hampton University. <laughs> and Mr. Chair, there's a very nice story on Mr. Thomas in today's Daily Press, mm -hmm. feature story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from, in, any other comments from uh, board members except Mr. Samuels? <laughs> That's why I, I injected that, because I didn't want y'all to start fighting up here. I figured I'd just put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> With no further business to be brought for this board, I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>